This was one of the most difficult things that I had to do when I started to sell. And it's the big question of what niche do I go into? What do I start selling? So, and I just want to like explain, you know, kind of how you would go about this process. And I just want to explain to you that it is not an A to Z format. There's not like you just go on this linear path and you figure it out. It's pretty messy and you just kind of go, there's some general guidelines. And in this video, I'll show you kind of we're going to go just kind of through my brain about how I go about finding niches. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about the niches that I decided to go into and what ones are generally going to uh, yield more success. And uh, here's the thing. It's different for everybody. So this is going to be a bit unstructured because that's how the process is. Okay. If you're watching someone and it's like, it's in step guide to find, it's like, no, it's like, it's to get you to click. I've heard of zero people who have literally gone and just like, no, just people like to read it that way, but that's just not the way that life is. Okay. It's very unmessy and it just kind of comes in coincidences. So I might not even finish this video. You know, we might just stop and I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Cause that's the way that it is. So, um, Generally, uh, first, I want to explain what niches have I kind of gone into throughout my history and what was it like? So originally, I didn't know what niche I wanted to go into. So I just started to sell stuff, okay? Like I went to surplus stores and I would just buy stuff that was really underpriced and I would sell it for more. Cool. And I started to learn all these e-commerce skills. I had sold silver and gone through, and like literally sorted out pennies and I was getting the copper ones and selling those for more because I had knowledge in that industry. All right. And I also, uh, as I was flipping stuff throughout the days. So I had a competitive advantage when I was looking at stuff that, you know, most people would look at it and be like, I don't know, really know what that is. Well, I knew what it was and, and had the ability to research there. So uh, I was able to go through kind of secondhand electronics and stuff, but then I ev eventually ended up going into, uh, you know, trying to private label electronics. And I learned that you know, it has a big difference if you want to uh, private label and make your own products in electronics, a lot of regulations and scary things about finding a supplier in China that won't blow somebody's house up and then you get sued for everything. So um, here's my general guideline when you're going to choose a niche, okay? Uh, find something that you know about or that you're interested about, okay? So then you're going to have some form of competitive advantage. That's like big key right there. You want to find somewhere where you're going to have interest, <laughs> like you want to enjoy what you're doing, okay? If we're going to go into a niche where we know something about it or have some general interest, okay? By having this, we can get the competitive advantage of knowledge that somebody else who's sourcing currently does not have. Now, if you're doing secondhand stuff, you could find the deals that other people won't be able to find. Like if you're really good at fashion, you could be flipping uh, and finding value in all sorts of clothes at thrift stores and stuff. And if you are making apparel, you could be doing that and knowing like where to add value, where there's holes in the markets. Okay. Now that's just not enough though. You need to go into something that's not too hard to get into like electronics are very difficult because there's a very, it's a very competitive, low margin, technically difficult. And there's a lot of liability. So I, I don't suggest anybody goes there. I tried for years and uh, you know, there's some people do it right away, but you know, they got, it's a big mess anyways. So that's one. And then also here, here's another thing for going into a niche. You could know a lot about, I don't know, like sloth beds or something, but like, I just, let's look on Amazon. I don't know. Is there any sloth beds? Let's look up sloth beds. Uh, there's some, um, let's see, let's see on viral launch. Is there any volume for sloth beds? There's sloth, there's some sloth stuff here, but, um, all right. There's, you can see the monthly revenue here on the viral launch tool is just not that great. Okay. So we're probably not going to go into sloth beds, uh, but there might be some other stuff anyways. Um, general point. Okay. So we want to go into a, a, a bigger niche somewhere where we have knowledge. And then here's the other thing. Okay. Let's say we're not going to go into something that we have knowledge or passionate about. Where does somebody care? That's where I want to go as a beginner. Now I don't want to be going for these hot one-off products that like people are coming and going into because it looks like a good opportunity. That's a formula for like failure. Okay. So go somewhere where you can, where that customer cares. All right. So if somebody cares, and specifically if it's, uh, not here, here's another thing that I always think of, uh, is it utilitarian 
where there's a one given answer, like let's say we're gonna go for a watermelon, watermelon slicer. There's it's very clear like who has the best one for the best price and maybe there's a couple like somebody wants the fancy one and maybe somebody wants the like i don't know the the cuttiest one or like i don't know there's not too many ways you can cut a, a watermelon slicer okay so go somewhere where there's some form of choice so essentially the first one that i went into was motivational quotes on stuff okay so i was trying to like motivational what wristbands so I originally went into motivational wristbands and like, yeah, there's some stuff here and I could have made this successful, but I did an 80-20, all right? 80-20 wristband, why did that not work? Well, there was no volume, okay? Nobody was, look, everybody looking up 80-20, all right? What did they want, okay? So like motivational wristbands, a lot of people didn't know what 80-20 principle was. People looking up the 80-20 wristband, okay? Like, or 80-20, you see 80-20 wristband, nothing comes up with, and then the 80-20 principle, like, it all comes up with books, okay? So, like, could have made it work, but here's the key lesson from this. You need volume. There has to be, there, there's got to be that search demand, okay? So, the, some ideas are great. So, mo putting motivational quotes on stuff is actually a great idea, and I could have made it work, but it wasn't Amazon, okay? You, like, ideas, some ideas are great, but they're not great for Amazon. Amazon is a search volume game, okay? Now, let's say I wanna do show you something here though. If we were to go to um, Iconic, all right? So I essentially made Iconic a while ago and we were making them uh, about three years ago. I just never launched them and I didn't know how to do social media marketing correctly, but Iconic is worth tens of millions of dollars and they have partnerships with like, you know, uh, Gary Vee and all sorts, of Tom Bilyeu, all sorts of other people. And they just took motivational stuff and put it on posters and then they learned how to do social media marketing correctly. They do a bunch of money on Instagram and other stuff. But if you look up at Amazon motivational wall art, there's just not too much volume here because you know people aren't necessarily, there. I mean, there might be some now that they've kind of created a market. Now there actually is somewhat. Um, and it's actually a pretty good market to go into because here's here's what's different about this market, okay? People care about this and everybody, it's like a different market for everybody that would go into this because, okay, great. So you want to be motivated by your wall art, but guess what? What motivates me isn't the same as what motivates Sally or Jim. Like, you know, everybody's got their own ones. So there's also, here's another key thing. You want to choose one where there's not a market, like at least for me, like, or for beginners, Go somewhere where you care about, but that uh, everybody would choose a different choice. Like the best answer for someone is different than somebody else because you can make something that is different. Now, why is this important? Because when you're getting started, you don't have a lot of capital and you don't have uh, a lot of skills and knowledge, okay? So what do you have to do? You need to find some way to add value and be different and have somebody still choose you even though you're not the, you like, you're just getting started and you might not have a lot of reviews and you don't know how to rank necessarily the best, but you have that great product. So you won't get as many eyeballs right away as you're learning to gather eyeballs and get people to your listing, but you can make a good piece, you can make a good product that somebody loves and it's like, well, yeah, it only has 18 or it only has eight reviews. That other guy has 1,042, but I like this one better. So I'm going to buy it anyways, even though it's 20 bucks more because I like it better. So or, or that's kind of where I like to go is uh, some, like find somewhere where you're generally interested or you could generally oh, add value no. where there's volume. So people are looking up these keywords and then if you can, you know, do PPC to get to the top something and yours is like you know okay whatever so like what are let me just show you other examples of, of ways like let's say packaging okay uh let's see packaging uh, i can move myself over here packaging packaging tape all right what about this um very clear and stuff but i'm sure that there's like decorative pa packaging tape like um decorative packaging Decorative packaging, like what about all the small businesses who are making, um, I don't know, there's like all sorts of people who are like, let's say you have a jewelry shop or for presents or stuff like that. Um, you know, there's like, look at this. It's very, very like, 
basically there's some form of choice and this keyword I, I'm probably has some good volume here. Let's run this again. Maybe not. Who knows? I'm wrong. Guess what? You're going to be wrong a lot when you do this. Cool. Not a good idea. What is this though? Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about digging into niches later, but essentially like kind of come up with ideas of like where are you interested and where could you somehow provide value. And, and it's just kind of this process where you're going back and forth and back and forth of like, hmm, where could I add value or make something different where people are going to choose things differently or where do I have knowledge or like where do I um yeah like let's say um here here let me go back again let's say you were looking for um uh there's so many that I could go into let's say packaging uh like poly bag poly bags decorative poly bags okay or poly mailers. Here's one. Like, so this is a niche. Like, let's say you have a jewelry shop or a small business, okay? Um, you're sending out packages to people. Uh, you, you know, you're not doing too many sales, but you, you need some way to ship to your customers. And you want to, like, th th they care, okay? These people care about their customers and how things are presented to them. So if you're able to give them a better option of, like instead of a gray poly mailer, like most people get, like you remember Amazon used to ship them in those. Now instead you're giving them a nice little decorative thing. Like here's some unicorns or other things like, let's see, or here, how about this? So let's say people for Halloween, they want to like say, yo, we're like tip. I don't know. We're shipping. A, like, I don't know. You want to have better connection with your customers. So here, like what, let's see, what is this doing for revenue? Let's use the black box product research tool. Oh yeah. I have, Links down there, if uh, you guys don't know what these are, or you wanna learn more, go click down there. These are doing uh, pretty good revenue, actually. I mean, it's not gonna be doing great year round, but look, like all they did was, uh, they just found somebody that made poly mailers and they made decorative things on them. So you could probably do this for like Easter, you could probably do this for every single market. And there's always gonna be people who wanna have like seasonal packaging, okay? Or let's say there was like a jewelry shop or something um, and you wanted to like have different designs, like maybe zebras or whatever, or like donuts or like, I don't know, let's check out this. And then I would click on this guy. So I'd start digging in. Like, what does he do? Oh, look, all they do is sell different decorative mailer stuff. How much do they do for volume? Um, I don't know. Like, let's see, look at all this. Okay. They're doing thousands of dollars a month on all these different ones. So essentially I want to find somewhere where like I could, you know, there's like, you can expand out your product line, build it all around a general theme. So like if you really like packaging, or let's say you didn't even like packaging, but you're like, ah, this looks like a good product opportunity. Um, what are they doing monthly? I mean, they're doing, I bet if you were to add up all their products here, they would be doing, uh, I don't know, they're pro this is a full-time income, over $100,000 a year profit, just off of these, like finding one supplier of poly mailers and adding just random, like not even that cool designs, like, I don't know, like, Woodland critters, I don't know. Guess, guess people love woodland critters, or <laughs> at least enough do. How many what? How many do they do in a month? Four thousand, four thousand bucks a month. So that they're probably making like 15, 20 grand profit a year off these woodland creatures. Could you make twenty grand a year off woodland creatures? Yes, you could. Could you make better woodland creatures than this? I think that we could make better woodland creatures than this. I think we could. Wait, is that? We let me put a Bambi on there. Come on. You could make a Bambi. What about a, a muskrat? We need muskrats. If you made muskrat ones for me, I would buy it. Or alpacas. Come on. Where are the alpaca poly mailers? I would, I would do my whole business on that. All right. So this is the thing. Like, anywhere... Anywhere where there's a form of choice or something or like here. So these are like where there's the aesthetic where everybody has something different. Um, and another one you could do is, uh, all right, so here's another key way that you could choose a niche of like, where could you find somewhere that you have knowledge? Uh, so let's say I know a lot about electronics, okay? So I can go into Arduinos which is like essentially mini computers for hobbyists who want to create, okay? Uh, you could be looking in here and it's like, wow, look at these. They're all different sorts of kits and like that. So here's another way. You provide materials 
and then you provide how-to guides, okay? Because, I mean, just think of it, like all the blueprints uh, just that exist in the world, uh, like go to Home Depot, cool. You could do anything with the stuff at Home Depot, but I can't do a dang thing. But if you sell me a guide and the exact cut pieces and whatnot, I could build something cool. And I mean, the same thing applies to just about anything. So any hobby, any craft or whatnot, if you can make a good detailed guide and all the pieces, um, it's just like this, like there's entire business models made off of just what, like food. She wants healthy food delivered to us and to just be able to make it and not have to think and it just comes and it's like, cool, good ha food. Like people do with crafts. So like what, gingerbread houses? All right, like what? Gingerbread house. Yeah, gingerbread, like build kits. You could build a kit company, all right? You could build a, all right, look at this. Like here's a little train. You can build a gingerbread company, all right? I don't know that I would do that because you might get like, you got people eating your stuff or maybe you said like, don't eat this. Don't eat these gingerbreads because they are not for consumption. Except, yeah, like you could just make the dopest gingerbread house kit. Like, I don't know, You like, okay, what about this? Like, you could have snow angels. You could, like, build, like, Christmas decorations. Like, you could literally build anything. Halloween, Halloween kits, f family pajama sets, all right? Those are huge. Those do hundreds of thousands every year. You could build, like, let's say you like really weird stuff for raves, okay? You could do, like, I don't know, like, they have rave fanny packs. Like, rave fanny pack, okay? Like there's all sorts of different ones. Like maybe somebody out there, where's the mystical cat, okay? People going to raves, people love cats. People on drugs love cats that look funny with pizza, all right? There's another way. Um, people like holographic stuff, you like phrases, like literally anything. Like what are you interested in? Just start to look into that. And um, yeah, so let's say you wanted to dig into a niche, okay? Then what I would use is I'd go to helium 10 and I'd start to like essentially like you, you find a general area and then you're going to look at the keywords. Okay. Um, and you want to find somewhere where, wait, is that the mystical cat? Oh baby. Okay. So this people right here, example. So we're going to make an assortment of fanny packs. So they got, Oh, look at that. It's a good kitty right there. What else have they got? Oh, more mystical cats. Then uh, dragons, I wouldn't buy the dragons. What is this? Oh my God, sloths. I knew the sloths would make it in this video. So <laughs> a sloth astronaut. I mean, you can make a niche out of anything if you know your market. So this person obviously knows their market of people going to raves. So you're just gonna put a bunch of funny, stupid, silly stuff on these and you could do a lot. Like, let's see what they did for revenue on these. Uh, they're probably not doing much, but I know in the summer, some of these were doing like 50,000 revenue a month, 20 grand and a month profit off of some fanny packs. Uh, I know it doesn't look like it now, but it's seasonal. So, I mean, Christmas, like Halloween decorations, like you could go after anything, basically. Here's my thing, like the do nots for building a niche. Don't go after something. I actually believe like that sells year round and is utilitarian and in a very clear of who the winner is. Okay. So if it's like people want the utility of a toothbrush. Okay. And I'm not going to go after a toothbrush because everybody's going to kind of compete on those toothbrushes over time. And then the best one's going to be at the top. And then now it's like, who's the best price for reviews? And like, I really don't care what toothbrush I get. I'm not going to go after something like that. But if there's some design aesthetic, people are going to choose different markets or everybody's going to choose something kind of different based off their personality. Or if it's an extension of them and they're choosing their self, I think that that is the best area for people to become a, like have success as a winner. So let's say you were like anything, arts and crafts, a hobby, um, kids or like something like where, well, I don't know, you literally do anything. So, I mean, I could spit them out and like, I, I, if you really love slots, I'm sure we could figure out a way to make full-time living with slots, all right? Um, that's gonna be my rant on choosing a niche. How about you guys let me know uh, what you want? I guess I could show you how to do it with keywords. 
Uh, okay, so I guess I'll go into that. Okay, so this is helium 10, and then what I would use is essentially a magnet right here, and this is going to give us, so if you find like one area, like let's say we wanted to do a, um, uh, let's say we wanna do a sloth, okay? Now we can look up everything that has the word sloth in it and related ones, we're gonna see the actual keyword volume on Amazon. So like we said, one of the key criteria is you gotta have volume. Because if nobody's searching or buying, then you got to go to social media. It's not an Amazon product. Come on, give me the sloth. Okay, cool. So like, let's say, oh yeah, screw it. We're not going with the sloth. We're going to go with a kit. Because a kit's a great example of where you could add value into anything. And there's an unlimited number of kits that could be made for anything that is a kit. Okay? Because it's a kit. It's not a kid. It's a kit. Even though that's a kid with a kit. If you get, yeah, no. Anyways, kit. All right, so I could search by exact phrase volume, okay? So where is this? Teeth whitening kit. I'm not going to go into that because that's utilitarian, all right? Now it's like who can make the... Like, I'm, and then people putting stuff in their mouth, and I don't know how to make teeth white. I mean, mine are, they're not terribly yellow, but car accessories. Car accessories. Here's one actually where you could go into are RVs. Here's I know that there's all sorts of different RVs. Now you can make a customized, like... A kitchen kit for an RV, okay? Because each RV is different. They all have different cupboard sizes. They all have different sink sizes. You could find the best, like you could make a custom uh, sink, like you can make a like, custom strainer. You can make custom like organizing kits. You could literally just find the most populous RV. Um, find the most, like the ones that are the most RV models, okay? And start to collect all the dimensions. This is actually a million dollar company that I thought about doing, but I'm not going to. You can make a blog and everything and then make Amazon parts specifically for uh, each individual RV and finding the pain points of each one of those. And then you could fill in like, okay, here's an organ, like a, a rack. It's so hard. People spend so much time and money on their RVs, decking it out and it's a giant research thing but nobody serves it because it's old market. They're selling to old people. Old people make the products. It's not served at all. People go on Amazon, look it up right now. There's nothing. All right. Like if you go to like one of the, actually the best markets on Amazon is RVs because it's old people and yeah, they got money and they're just, they're all retired blowing it on their RV. I'm going to stop saying RV. Anyways, go back. What's it like? Um, Jewel pods, don't know what that is. Not gonna make a first aid kit. Don't wanna get sued. Don't care about removing blackheads. Um, slime kit. Um, oh shit, I'm looking the wrong way with my face. Okay, there we go. Um, let's see. Um, nightmare, slime kit. We were gonna build a beard kit with one of our companies. Uh, one of my friends decided not to. Good market. Don't know if it is anymore. Um, Christmas gifts. Probably wouldn't go after that. Wedding gifts for a couple. Boom. It's a huge market. Let's say you're a woman or man, probably a woman. Um, wedding gifts for the couple. Why is that a good niche? Okay. Because guess what? It's an extension of yourself. It's a very special moment in life. You're giving a gift to somebody that is like your representation of you. And it's, it's a very special moment. And guess what? Every, everybody's going to choose something different for a wedding gift because like every couple is different and you like as like what does that couple mean to you and like what do you want to provide to them so like wedding gifts for like you know there's all sorts of customization stuff here um like look at this, this is all different like this okay let's see it's like seven thousand bucks a month Look at that, okay? So this is making like 30 grand a year. Barely any reviews. What does it say? Mr. or Mrs. Estimated 2018. Woo! Like It's the simplest product in the world, okay? You can make a whole wedding gift brand, guaranteed. Make a couple hundred grand a year just choosing wedding, like literally anything you like. We can go to parties, okay? You could uh, uh, like gender reveal parties. You could go to like uh, bridal parties. You could go to anything like literally any interest like you go into bead crafts you go into like i could start a whole arduino company i uh, just assembling different like hobby kits for that um i don't know knitting stuff like making different knitting kits you could do like anything okay um wedding gifts for the couple let's see you could make a survival kit pretty easily 
um, just assort all the different things that you would need um, for the different parts of the market. Because like when you're bundling, it's like every, there's all sorts of different groups and needs within a market. So you could do that. I'm ranting a lot, but like, this is just me trying to show you like, there's, there's stuff everywhere. I probably wouldn't go after arts and crafts for girls or subscribe the keyword subscribe and save. Um, but yeah, so this is a, if you use the healing 10 tool, I have a link down here uh, where you could get it for seven days for free and then 10% off for life. If you have an account uh, or you sign up for a new one. And uh, yeah, I really like this or you could buy their Cerebro tool or, or magnet tool differently. Uh, yeah, check it out down there. Emergency kit, I'm probably not gonna sell that, but maybe you could sell like an emergency survival kit or something for cars. So like you could build specific car kits. Basically when somebody like find, looks your thing up, they, they wanna be like, that's the one for me. That was made for me special. Nobody else has made that. Or like that design or that assortment, like that's, that's the only one. And, and if it's the only one for them and it's the best, it doesn't matter how many reviews there are. It's there. Like it's, as long as you did a good job and you made a good product, then you just won them. Okay. Bracelet making kit. I don't know. Probably do that. Um, I don't know. You could probably do this pretty, pretty, I don't know that uh, there, I wouldn't go up against an industry that's really old and like heavily mon like Basically, I wouldn't go up against, at least me personally, I'm not going to go up against, uh, so like bracelet making kits, I'm pretty sure, but I'm, there's probably some way. Where are the emojis at? Where are the emojis at? Um, the emojis got to be here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Of course. I knew the emojis would be here somewhere. Yeah, see? Uh, you, but you could probably build a way better emoji one. If, if you really cared about this, you could make the dopest emoji bracelet making kit. I mean, like anything that you want. Um, let's see what else is there. Dorm room essentials. Okay. There's a probably a pretty good market. Um, I don't know if this keyword necessarily, but like, what do you need for when you're doing, uh, uh, you know, when you're coming into, here's a college medical kit. What do you need when you're moving into, college basically like could you find could you find some way to uh, essentially take out the research and give everybody like no. how can you solve all those problems or like some of the ones generally grouped in one area and give them that need so that oh like they don't have to do the research you just gave it all to them like that gingerbread making kit they don't want to have to go and find a, a choo-choo train designed gingerbread kit okay you make it all nice for them and they get to have this fun experience of building a gingerbread house and you just did it for them and they're gonna love it, all right? Just start thinking around like, where could you add value already of interest? Like, I mean, I could go on forever. Rocks, crystals, don't get me started on crystals. I'm not gonna talk about crystals. My wife wants to buy a crystal, I, I say no. But there's people out there, I, I suggest you love it. But like, let's say you, you really despise crystals and you wanna sell them though. You could still do it, all right? But I suggest you go into something that you like and you love because that way you're gonna really find those holes in the market and you're gonna enjoy reading the negative customer emails. So these are my overall tips on Christmas gifts for men. That's, I don't know if I'd go after that one, but you could. It's very undefined, okay? So there, here's another key thing. People who are looking to solve a need, okay? Like wedding gifts for couples. They're looking, they have a problem, okay? They're saying, here's what I need. Suggest me something. I'll choose one. Versus a red silicone baking mat. I mean, we could go and look up a red silicone, red silicone baking mat. Wouldn't suggest going into this. I'd oh, say no. uh, pretty defined that they've got red silicone baking mats covered on Amazon, all right? So, I mean, you come in and try to compete here, not gonna do it. Or what, what are the other ones people look up? Scratch, scratch off maps. Everybody always thinks, oh, this looks like great. I'd say it's pretty covered. Maybe, like, that's where other people try to go. Where else do they try to go? Pet grooming gloves. They say like, wow, look at all this. <laughs> look at all the volume on these pet gloves. Well, yeah, like, Oh, there's a moth in here. 
Man, when I was in Bali, there was moss, there was spiders, there were snakes jumping from the ceiling. Here in Minnesota, I can't get away from them. All right, what's up? X-ray, product research. People look at the volume and they say, wow, that looks amazing. I want to do that. But they don't think about like, what's it going to actually take? Like, where are you going to go forward from these pet gloves? And why would people buy your pet glove over the other ones? I, I mean, it looks pretty clear. People want blue and black. Like, are you really going to crush it because you came in with the red ones? Well, I think people want blue or black. Oh, maybe that guy. You know, maybe this is that one guy who's like, no, people want red ones. Maybe that'll work. Probably not, though. And where are you going to go forward? Like, don't just sell something that's utilitarian. Like, what? Oh, I'm going to make the new design. I'm going to add this swirl and then it's going to go crazy. But I mean, like, at the end of the day, you're just selling on price and utility and that's you're never going to win then. All right. Like maybe you could have like the best dog in the picture, but like, no, it's which one is the best price and it's utility. All right. So let's say you really wanted to go into pets. Now, where do people like care and where is it something not so utilitarian where you could add or if it is utilitarian that you could express like people would actually care enough to have like that design of utility. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Like, like, do people really care about the design of their pet glove? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I, maybe, I'm not, I don't have the time to research this. My hunch is not, considering there, when I look it up, there's like nobody caring. Like, you would wanna see at least one decorative of one. I mean, there's that, there's this, this innovative guy who did the red pet glove. Now this is what you would call a rebel, a rebel, ground shaker. He said, everybody's going blue and black. I'm going to go red. Let's check him out. Is he breaking the rules everywhere else? It looks like he's, he's a mess. He's a mess, guys. I don't know if I would follow him. He's not drunk. He's not dead. He's going to get you, sucker. All right. He sells CDs. I'm getting meowed. See, now this is probably good. Okay, I'm just kind of giving this guy a hard time, but like it actually does look like he's doing stuff good. Maybe you should follow him. All right, but this would be a good example. So this is an engagement bridal gift that this guy is selling. And this is obviously geared towards cat people. So people looking for an engagement gift, it's like what? Well, girls like cats. Guys like cats too. Everybody loves cats. Look at the internet. That I'm digging Halloween. I don't know who would buy that, but apparently someone did. <laughs> um, don't hassle me. Yeah, like I don't know. I guess you could just sell a bunch of weird stuff and be a rebel and sell red pet gloves. <laughs> All right. Um, anyways, I digress. Go and find the volume. Go and find somewhere where people care. Find something that you generally like or are knowledgeable in or you could at least spew out random funny ideas and do a bunch of them. Uh, that's how you find a niche and then start to go from there. Yeah, I'm going to end it here. Maybe I'll finish this later. If you're on YouTube, check it out sometime soon. Be a rebel. When everybody else goes blue and black with the pet gloves, go red. Subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs> Leave a comment of what you thought about the rebel with the red pet glove. Are you guys rebels? What kind of niches did you like that I went into? Let me know and have a great day.